Thanks for tuning into this video weather presentation. We'll talk about some of the climate extremes of 2019 and we'll take a look at the outlook for the upcoming summer. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service San Diego office. Just a reminder here that National Weather Service does post information in real time on Twitter and you can follow with some of the hashtags shown here for different hazards across Southern California. All right, a lot of numbers here, but what we're showing here is key climate locations across Southern California. On the left-hand side, if you focus on a couple locations such as Santa Ana, you can see that for the water year 1819, the current water year, they've had 18.2 inches of rain. This is quite a bit above normal, where the average is right around 13, as shown in green. Since 2013, they've up to about 55 inches of rain, but notice that in the past six years, that is still well shy of the average of all those years. This is a location that gets, on average, around 13 and a half inches of rain, as shown on the right. Take a look at your favorite location and see how well that area is doing compared to averages. All right, we've had uh, some wild winters recently, and you can see here that back in 2010-11, a La Nina, that was a very wet year across Southern California. Then fast forward to 2016-17, another very wet winter, and that was a La Nina as well. Now, if you look at the most recent winter, this will go down as a weak El Nino, and you can see it also was a wet year across Southern California. Now, sandwiched in between was 2017-18, no matter where you look, very dry. Here are some of your mountain locations. If you're interested in those areas, take a look at those numbers and see how they compare. Now in San Diego, over the past 10 years, this is how we stack up. You can see in 2019, we are up to 12.81 inches, which is above normal. Again, the average is 10.34. Take a look at the individual years over the past 10 years and see how much precipitation we received and what the state of Enso was. In other words, was it a La Nina or an El Nino? All right, very extreme across Southern California the past two years. Just take a look at 2017-18, the second driest year on record in San Diego, and then how much precipitation we received here in 2018-19. All right, we're gonna take a look at some extreme events over the past several years here. Now here's a look at the summary of one of our driest years on record. Take a look at some of the bullet points here, including the record warmth, record dry, and record sea surface temperatures, but on top of that, record humidity in Southern California. What was going on in 2018? Well, we had moisture that came up from tropical cyclone Sergio. That was one big event in the fall. That resulted in a widespread lightning outbreak across Southern California, as shown here, with hundreds of lightning strikes detected. It also resulted in flash flooding, as shown here in these photos, across the deserts. Major flooding occurred in some of the normally dry washes and channels out in the Coachella Valley. Lightning was common even on the coast as shown here with numerous lightning strikes, deadly lightning strikes right in Carlsbad. This photo was captured near La Jolla, Southern California during that October lightning outbreak. Now what's been going on so far in 2018-19? Well, it was wet and it wasn't just in Southern California, it was all of the West at least for California and the Great Basin and the Southwest. You can see in Southern California specifically, most locations were over 140% of normal. Now that was not record wet. Some of the record wet did occur further north in the Great Basin area, as shown in the dark green. Nonetheless, very wet across almost all of California compared to normal. We could see it on satellite as well. If you compare two years, you can see how green it was 
on the left hand side compared to the brown right hand side even the flowers showed up what do i mean by flowers well the poppy or the super bloom outbreak that occurred in march was evident on visible satellite imagery and even showed up orange as shown here snowpack was also evident and compared to the prior year nothing really showed up other than the brown color here's a photo of some of the super bloom that occurred across the Lake Elsinore area. Now what was the culprit for such a wet winter? Well in simple terms we had a lot of atmospheric rivers and several of them. Some of them were quite large and they moved across not just Northern California but all of California including Southern California. The track of those atmospheric rivers are shown here. Now when we went into the springtime Southern California dried out quickly. March and April ended up being much below normal, especially when you went down near the Mexico border here, where precipitation was well less than 50% of average for March and April. Continued wet conditions, however, across Northern California, Central California, and especially into Nevada, where they saw some of that record precipitation this winter. Now, fast forward to May of 2019, and it was very wet. All the dark blue areas here were greater than 200% of normal. It's not typically supposed to rain much in California, especially southern, in May. All right, let's take a look at some of the precipitation events from this past winter. One that I really want to highlight is December 6, 2018. That produced not just heavy rain, but thunderstorms with heavy rain two to three inches of rain in about two hours in some of our major metropolitan areas including Orange County and San Diego as well as Oceanside. That particular event produced some of the first major debris flows that we've seen across our region. It also produced some dangerous flash flooding submerging vehicles. January 2019 featured a major atmospheric river that really took hard across Orange County in California, where precipitation of one to two inches fell just in about two hours, producing widespread flooding, such as places in Seal Beach. Now, some of our bigger atmospheric rivers that are still having impact across Southern California highways, meaning highways that are still closed, occurred with the atmospheric river on February 2nd, followed by a bigger one on February 14th. This is what an atmospheric river is. It's basically a focused area of strong wind and moisture transport that slams into the coastal part of California and is really wrung out across our mountain areas. The Valentine's Day storm will go down in the books as historic. This is a scientific view of how much moisture was in place during the morning on Valentine's Day on satellite in the middle and then using weather balloons on either side showing extremely saturated conditions across Southern California. The impacts were great and the impacts are still being felt with highways such as 74 and 243 closed. Widespread flooding, very high snow levels including damaging winds. Highways across Southern California that are still closed are shown here this is Highway 243 and 74 up by Idlewild. Severe impact occurred. Now, so much rain occurred that construction is continuing to repair and replace and rebuild these roads. Across Idlewild, where these roads were damaged, 5 to 10 inches of rain fell in about 24 hours. That was about a third of what precipitation they've seen all of this winter. Now if you look across Southern California and 2019 you can see here that precipitation ranks well above normal and that's mostly due to the several major atmospheric rivers that we saw including the one in December, January and the two big ones in February. How does it rank across our region? Well, looking at specifically the heart of winter, December through February, we can see much of the United States was very wet, 
with very unusual wet conditions in the Tennessee Valley and abnormally wet conditions across California, but not the wettest. So far in 2019, we are starting off quite cold, but it's been above average. February 2019 stands out as very significant, not just for rainfall, but also for being cold. Temperatures across the West were much below normal. And in fact, across California, you can see it was the top 10% below normal. A very cold February, in some cases record breaking. How cold was it? Well, February really stood out. We saw record cold in some of our city locations such as Vista, Ramona, Anaheim, and Big Bear Lake, as shown here. In San Diego alone, February came out to be several degrees below normal. So when you put it all together, October through May, we can see that in California, especially Southern California, it turned out to be quite a bit below normal, several degrees. In fact, focusing on Southern California, you can see most of the blue shading areas of below normal temperatures for that entire period, October through May, was in that region. Specifically, in February, Palomar Mountain ended up being the second coldest February on record. So not just wet, but cold. Ramona, California, the coldest February on record. The cold then repeated itself again in the month of May. 2019 May across Southern California also will go in the record books for being very wet, as shown earlier, but also much below normal. Check out some of our mountain locations, several degrees below normal for our mountains. Very unusual in May to have such cold, persistent weather across Southern California, with even snow in our higher terrain several different times. All right, this is how the snowpack shapes up across California. You can see different years stack up here, and the bottom line is that the current year is one of the snowiest on record. We did not surpass 1982-83, but the dark blue line shows that it was very comparable to the very snow years of 2010-11 and also 2016-17. Specifically across Southern California, Big Bear, for example, had a very snowy winter, but was well shy of some of our even recent years like 2016-17. Some of the snowpack that occurred across the San Bernardino Mountains are shown on the table to the, the right, and that includes information from Caltrans. Here's a look at the San Gregorio Peak, where in early May, we were measuring about 19 inches of snow water equivalent. So the snowpack was significant and carried all the way into May, with now even a little bit of snow left into June. Across all of California, the Sierra Nevada is a big and significant component of our water supply. Now, that region, the average of precipitation was up around 68 inches, compared to normal of just around 51. It doesn't stack up to be the wettest year on record, though. That was just a couple years ago, 2016-17. Take a look at some of the years on this chart. Now, how are we doing with water supply? Outstanding. This is a big part of why the drought has been removed. Most of our reservoirs are near or above historical averages and near capacity. Now, this was also the case in the Colorado River, except those reservoirs remain very low. So precipitation was not only just significant in California, but also in the Colorado River Basin. But those areas had a lot more room and still a lot more water supply is needed out there. Here's a look at some of our major reservoirs and you can see the trace. Now Lake Mead and Powell, for example, still running near historical lows. However, in California, because of the Sierra snowpack and water distribution, Diamond Valley Lake storage, it was at record low in 2016. Now it's near capacity. Some of our smaller reservoirs are shown here and you can see they also are basically near capacity. So great news for water supply and drought recovery. Even some of the reservoirs in San Diego County, like San Vicente, getting up to 82% of capacity. Now, some other areas that were still having trouble recovering from the drought, Big Bear Lake. 
it was as much as 18 feet below full. It's now up to about nine feet below. So we've recovered about 50% of that, but we're still well below normal on Big Bear Lake. All right, and because of this, we can see the drought monitor has changed significantly. Across all of California, drought has been completely removed. The first time since 2011, we have some lingering long-term deficits, not drought, but long-term deficits across Southern California and some problems across the Pacific Northwest where their winter was drier than normal. Lingering drought conditions also in parts of the Four Corners or the Desert Southwest. Zoomed up on California, you can see the only abnormal dry areas are Southern California. And that is because of the long-term deficits of a basically 48 to 60 month period where we're still below our averages as shown earlier. What went on this winter? This was basically the storm track this winter that produced unusually cold weather and wet stormy weather across the West. You can see the jet stream basically phased for the majority of February and March across our region. Now, if we look at it from December through March, we can see it was a little bit flatter, more averaged out, but still in general, the Pacific jet stream was focused on Northern California, and that is where the track was and the abnormally cold weather and wet weather occurred. Much warmer conditions were over the Pacific as shown to the right. Now, what happened in May? So May, we had a very unusual pattern where a blocking upper level high pressure area, the H on the right, basically didn't allow storms to go through their normal spring track of Canada. And they shifted further south, unusually far south, creating an anomaly in Southern California that produced the 300% of normal precipitation and the near record cold for the month of May. All right, let's take a look at the ocean conditions. Starting last year, we saw warming along the equator. We saw persistent warm waters in most of the Pacific as shown here. Now, when we went into March, we had a full-blown weak El Nino going on as shown here in the rectangle box area. The warmth continued across the rest of the Pacific Ocean. Now, most recently, this is an image that shows water temperatures in early May and you can see the El Nino region remained, but those blobs of very warm water in the northern and eastern Pacific also remained. And this is an image from early June, and you can see a lot of persistent above normal sea surface temperatures in the central and northern Pacific. Meanwhile, the weak El Nino continues to linger across the equator. All right, here's a summary of everything we talked about, including the very wet 2018-19 that led to the super bloom, the El Nino conditions we saw, basically the removal of drought across California's and now our above average reservoir levels and the very high but not record breaking snowpack. Here's the outlook now as we look forward for July through September. The outlook is for warmer than normal conditions for this summer and a more active monsoon across most of the Great Basin and the Four Corners region of the Southwest. What this means is likely some significant heat waves across the West again and some active thunderstorm activity in the West. Now it doesn't mean we'll be as hot as the record-breaking August 2018, but it does mean that on average across California and the Southwest expect warmer than the 30-year average conditions for temperatures July through September.